I literally only see Chris Traeger every time I see Rob Lowe now on screen. In the new Netflix comedy Unstable, he's much like his Parks and Rec's character, but this time he's got his real-life son in the mix. But does that make the show fun to watch? Ellis Dragon is a universally admired, eccentric, narcissist-adjacent biotech entrepreneur working to make the world a better place. He's also in emotional freefall, and his son Jackson is none of those things. Can Jackson save Ellis and his company and salvage their estranged relationship while also doing what may actually be impossible, escaping the shadow of his larger-than-life father? Rob Lowe stars with his son John Owen Lowe in this eight-episode first season. The similarities between the two, they're uncanny. I mean, they're not unexpected since they're father and son, but it's really crazy at how much John speaks and emotes like his dad. The basic premise of the story is that Rob's character, Ellis, is a genius biotech guy who's mourning the loss of his wife, and it's causing his work to unravel, putting the company in danger of being taken over. His son is brought back to help stabilize Ellis, and from there, relationship insanity begins, leading to some laughs and ridiculousness along the way. Now, the heart and driving force of this show is the relationship between Ellis and Jackson. And because they're actually father and son in real life, the dynamics and their actions, they're extremely believable. They have natural timing from their familiarity with each other, creating sequences and banter that can be rapid fire and natural, with many portions not even feeling like it's been scripted. Plus, they genuinely appear to enjoy each other's presence, and that chemistry makes viewing all the more satisfying. Now, this is filmed and presented in a way that resembles Parks and Rec and also Arrested Development. It's fun, especially as the camera will sometimes act as a participant or viewer for what's going on. And this helps to put us closer to the characters, almost as if we're part of the conversations, even though we're not speaking. The episodes, they're rather short, each around 25 minutes long, and they go by quickly. The comedy is witty and it's snarky, and it made me chuckle a bunch. Now, the cast isn't huge, but it's made up of quirky characters, all designed to highlight a particular oddity or personality weirdness. We got the CFO, who's constantly stressed and is the glue holding a lot of the company together. But she also has a hidden secret that lets us into her mindset to get a better understanding of how she functions. And there are two scientists, one who is socially awkward, but with a big heart, and the other who can be the life of a party, but is also so driven by success that the thought of failure is paralyzing. There's also a supervisor who's wildly unprepared to lead others only because he lacks the confidence to stand up and lead, but he's also got an unhealthy obsession with somebody, making him an awkward mess at times. And then there's a therapist who's played by Fred Armisen, and he crafts somebody that is so clingy that you just want to throttle it. The absurdity that's created in pretty much every episode I think is fun, and typically it results in a bunch of laughs or smirks. Each of the characters has wonderful comedic timing, and they play off each other well to create setups and payoffs that mostly land. Now, sometimes the humor is forced, especially the longer that it goes along, but because there's a typical sweetness to the storylines, it allows for some good character interactions. Now, all of the arcs for the show, they're obvious, and the character progressions, they're extremely easy to follow and predict, but that doesn't mean they're not engaging. I mean, there's a lot of sentimentality and heart that's displayed, which then helps to build out a storyline that's intriguing. The downside, though, to the predictability and the quirky characters is that this became sort of grating as it went along. Not grating in the I never want to watch this again sort of way, but more of the I can only watch a couple of episodes at a time way. Now, I binged the entire eight episodes, but by the halfway point, it was beginning to be a chore, even though I was really enjoying the characters and the point of the story. And I think this is one of those that will probably be more satisfying to watch a chunk at a time, then take a break for something different, and then return to it in a day or so when the enjoyment can be maximized and not worn out. And I think what can make this so endearing when it comes to the characters is that so many of them have growth progressions where they start the series in one way and then learn and mature so that by the end, they're more enjoyable and more well-rounded as characters, making them people that we want to spend more time with, even if it is only in small chunks. Now, I'm curious if this will get a second season or not, but I think because of how unknown the future is for so many shows, the writers of Unstable, they did the smart thing and wrapped up the major storyline for this season, but they also created an arc that could be continued if the show's renewed. And that's why, if the show isn't picked up for another season, we can feel satisfied by what plays out and we're not left hanging by something major being unresolved or unanswered. And even though this is a low-stakes story as far as mystery or drama goes, it's still engaging as an ensemble comedy with a storyline that's fun. So overall, Unstable is quirky and cute, with a cast that shines in their ridiculousness, fully understanding the type of show they're in and playing up their idiosyncrasies to create absurd situations and interactions. 
Rob and John Owen Lowe crush it with their inherent chemistry as father and son duo. While the show is very predictable and can become grating with its repetitious comedic bits, when taken in smaller doses, the touching story at the center captures a lot of heart and makes for some endearing watching. There's no sex, brief nudity, a ton of profanity, not really any violence. I give Unstable three and a half out of five couches. So have you seen any great comedic series lately? Let me know about them in the comments below. If you enjoyed this review, please give it a like. Also, don't forget to share and subscribe. I'm Chris. This is Movies and Munchies. Thanks for couching with me.